Interested in learning to code but curious about the resource and monetary investment you'll need to make to get started? I've got you. Today, I have a checklist of all the things that you will need to become a software engineer or a web developer. And as long as you have a phone, tablet, iPad, or a basic computer, you basically have all of the items that you need to get started. So I've got your checklist today and let's take a look at it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. If you're new here, hi, I'm Brie, and on this channel, I talk about my experiences as a software engineer and maybe tips and tricks to get you started if you're looking for a career in tech. Today, I have a list of some of the things that you'll need if you are looking to start your journey as a web developer or software engineer. So I've categorized these items into intangible things that you'll need and some tech that you'll need. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to say, and I think that it's one of the most important things, if you're just getting started out, you don't need anything fancy. You don't need a fancy gaming computer, a gaming laptop. You don't need a huge panoramic curved screen. You don't need any fancy courses or an expensive degree or a certificate or anything like that. The goal when starting is not to go in debt just so that you can learn a new skill. You can start out with what you have and as you grow, you can treat yourself to new things. So first and foremost, I have said on this channel multiple times that you should have a plan and a rough goal. So this isn't something tangible that you're gonna get from somewhere, of course, but when you're learning a new skill, it's helpful to have a goal in mind so that you always know what you're working towards. Now, when you're just starting out and when you're first learning how to program, it's likely that you won't know exactly what you should know or what you should learn. So my advice is to start off with a question that you have, or if you have a specific goal in tech, then go with that. One of my questions when I was learning how to code was always, how do elevators work? And it's something that I still think about and I don't know why, it's just, that's been my question. So for you, you can pick a question or pick a topic, and then as you learn and grow with that topic, you can expand from there. So if your question is, how do I create a website? You might wanna look at languages like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML is going to be the backbone of your website, and you can create a, a website with just HTML by itself. Once you learn how to use that, you can then branch out to making it look pretty uh, with CSS and then making it do cool things with JavaScript. If you're looking to create games or you're looking to do some complicated calculations, maybe to answer some questions that you have about statistics, you might wanna take a look at Python, which is a very beginner-friendly language that has a lot of libraries and extensions that can be used to make some really cool projects. If you're still stuck and you can't really figure out what your question might be, I always recommend starting out with front-end development because it's sort of like getting your feet wet in programming. And somewhere up here, I will show you one of the roadmaps that I found that's pretty helpful and pretty encompassing in uh, some of the technology that you should learn to get started. So once you have your plan, then you can start thinking about the tech that you'll need. Like I said before, you really only need a basic computer, and if you don't have a basic computer at your disposal, you can use your phone or your tablet or an iPad or something like that. So if you're gonna be using a computer, you really only need two things at the basis. The first thing is gonna be somewhere where you can write and store your code and that would be an integrated development environment or an IDE, and there are tons of free IDEs available online. The two that I tend to use the most are Visual Studio Code and Sublime. I really like VS Code and I use it on a daily basis even at work because of the extensions that it allows you to add into your development environment. And the second thing you'll need is something that you're probably already using, and that's a browser where you can see your projects basically come to life. And I like Chrome because I really like the dev tools in comparison to Firefox, and I'm not even gonna tell you that I've tried to debug a website in Internet Explorer because it's, no, I don't, no. 
If you're gonna be using something like a tablet or an iPad or your phone, there is an app called Solo Learn that I know that I've talked about a few times on this channel, but basically it's a really awesome app that allows you to code on the go or just on your phone. And it allows you to write your code, run code, but it also has some great learning resources and you can code with other people online. So as long as you can write your code and run it, which you can with Solo Learn, um, an IDE on your computer and see it in a browser, you're all set to start learning. So the next piece is education and resources that you're actually going to use to learn. Once you have your goal and your tech, you are ready to start learning. If you're going to invest anywhere, I think that I personally would uh, invest in the educational resources. There are some great resources that are completely free and some of the paid resources you might not find that you're learning as much from. So this piece is all going to be up to how you learn best. So some of my favorite free resources are W3Schools, Free Code Camp. Of course, there are tons of YouTube videos where you can basically just input a question that you have or input a topic and I guarantee you there's tons of YouTubers who are teaching people online for free. If you're looking for more of a beginner computer science course, Harvard offers their CS50 course on edX for free. And if you're looking for some hands-on learning, HackerRank is a great start as well. If you think that you are okay with investing a little bit into your education, some of my favorite paid resources are Udemy. So Udemy is a site where you can purchase different courses and they have more than just like tech and programming courses. They have courses in just about everything. My library is full of courses, some I haven't actually taken yet, but they have a lot of awesome courses and teachers there. I really am enjoying Front End Masters right now as well. Front End Masters, if uh, you're looking for more website development, is a website where you pay a fee per month and you get access to their whole library of videos in different courses. And if you're looking for anything front end, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and the list goes on, it's not just uh, confined to those three technologies. They have so many. I would definitely recommend checking out Frontend Masters. And of course, my favorite to recommend for beginners, which is Team Treehouse, because it's almost like a school online, but it's very interactive and there's multiple different styles of learning and also multiple different styles of practicing. So they have like multiple choice questions, but they also have like code in the blank and fill in the blank questions um, as you're going through their modules. And I really recommend it for first timers. So some things that you'll also need that don't necessarily have to do with your tech or your plan, or how you're going to be learning, a positive mindset and attitude is definitely a must because things are going to get tricky and challenging and that's where you're also going to need determination. There's gonna be times where maybe you don't exactly understand a concept and you have to see it maybe two or three or more different ways before it actually clicks for you. Give yourself time because you're learning something that is unlike anything else that you've learned before. And a bonus is going to be a network of people to keep you motivated and to ask questions. So I am available on Twitter and Instagram where I post tech related content as well. Um, you can follow me on those platforms and I'll go ahead and leave them somewhere down here. I'm always willing to throw out a word of motivation or anything like that for anybody who's having a tricky time or answer any questions that you guys might have and maybe I can help you out with. So that is my list. You'll notice that a lot of the things, I think almost everything, if you don't have any money to invest, you can still learn to code. There's still a way for you to do it. If there's a will, there's a way. I hope that you all found this video helpful. If you liked this video, please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And I can't wait to see you all in my next video.